know you feel sorry for me. Um, I was going to say it was nice to come home this morning, or actually uh, 4 a.m. early Saturday morning, but not. It's cold up here. My goodness. All right, well, I want to dive right in. So let's go to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Let's take our Bibles. Mark chapter 9, starting at the second verse. And I'm going to ask you, keep your fingers there, because we're going to come back to that here in just a little bit. Mark chapter 9, starting at the second verse. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the top of the mountain. No one else was there. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance changed, and his clothing became as white. I'm sorry. I can't even read this myself. His clothing became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly process could ever make it. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. Teacher, this is wonderful, Peter exclaimed. We will make three three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't really know what to say, for they were terribly afraid. Then a cloud came over them, and a voice of the cloud said, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly they looked around and Moses and Elijah were gone. And only Jesus was with them. As they descended the mountainside, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until he, the son of man, has risen from the dead. Could you imagine being up there? And then coming back down and having Jesus tell you, don't tell anybody about what you just saw. I know it was the most exciting thing in your life, but don't tell anybody. I'm sorry, I I would be a big mouth. Sorry. But let me ask you this. Life is kind of different. Days are different. Weeks are different. All of us have these, what I call, peaks and valley moments in our life, don't we? For some of us, we have these peaks of excitement, things that happen in our life. There's something great. There's something to celebrate. There's always something to remember. All you dads that were here last Friday night with your daughters, that was something to remember. It was something very special to see this place transformed and to be able to celebrate and to dance and to have fun. You know, as a Christian, it's really easy to say, oh, you know what? God is so great. He's so good in my life. I'm riding this Christian God high thing right now. And there's no doubt in my mind that when God is blessing you and you're taking in the richness of his goodness and you're relaxing in all of that, It's easy for us to get up and dance and to celebrate and let everybody know how awesome God is. But then the valleys of life take place. Someone very special or dear to us dies. We might be in some kind of financial distress. We might have some kind of personal family situation going on. We're arguing with a friend, a co-worker, a spouse the lowest points of our life. But do we have that same enthusiasm for God? Do we say, oh, God is so great in the valley of my life? Or do we wait to shout from the mountaintops when life is good? But you know, sometimes doubt looms, doesn't it? Sometimes we have to wonder in our life, As we look at someone's situation, maybe we visit someone at hospice. Maybe we visit someone in critical shape in the hospital. We we look at them and go, wow, where is God? Why is he not answering our prayers? We've been praying unceasingly, doing everything he wanted us to do, but he's not taking care of business. How do I respond to that? How do I react? But God is good, and he's good all the time. I want to go over to Psalms, Psalms 34. Psalm 34, and I'm going to read the entire one. I know this is a little lengthy, but Psalms 34 puts it all into perspective. 
Psalm 34, hear these words. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak of his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Come, let us tell the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me, freeing me from all my fears. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. I cried out to the Lord in my suffering and he heard me. He set me free from all my fears. For the angel, the Lord, guards all who fear him and he rescues them. Taste and see the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who trust him. Let the Lord's people show him reverence. For those who honor him will have all they need. Hear that again. Let the Lord's people show him reverence. For those who honor him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will never lack any good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Do any of you want to live a life that is long and good? Then watch your tongue. Keep your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Work hard at living in peace with others. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help, but the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them for their times of trouble. The Lord will close the brokenhearted, and he rescues those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous face many troubles. Hear that again. The righteous face many troubles. But the Lord rescues each of them, every one of them. For the Lord protects them from harm. Not one of their bones will be broken. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked. And those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. Everyone who trusts in him will be freely pardoned. Very you know, as I think about it, where are you right now? Some of you might be sailing on top of the mountain. Others of you may be sitting deep, deep in the darkest valley of your entire life. But you know, as we hear these words, things with Jesus were going along pretty good. He'd performed all these miracles. He was walking on water. He was feeding the 5,000. He was surrounded by crowds that were listening to him. They were taking it all in. And it was easy to be a disciple then. Because Jesus, there's no doubt, as they were walking with Jesus, they were watching these miracles take place. They were experiencing something that others had never experienced before. They were at a high point with Jesus. The disciples, they were on the mountain, they were riding it pretty high. But they had no idea, no clue, that the shadow of death would soon be coming. The crowds would turn against Jesus. One of them would betray him. Could you imagine Jesus being tortured, publicly condemned, and executed? A deep, dark, valley in the life of these disciples, in the life of people who loved and followed Jesus passionately. But Jesus knew that he would be riding with them on the top of the mountain in their lives. He would let them experience something spectacular with their own eyes. They would feel it. They would breathe it. It would become part of their own. They would begin to see that glimpse of glory, if you will, and to start to gain strength. But this reminds me a lot about being a Christian. This is why we need to prepare. This is why Christ has placed his word in your heart. 
to prepare you for the dark valleys of your life. If you still have Psalms 34 open, I'd like for you to go over to verse 7. Psalm 34, verse 7. For the angel of the Lord guards all who fear him, and he rescues them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who trust in him. You know, in our gospel text today, Jesus went out into the wilderness. Now, I know some of you in here are the wilderness type. You kind of like to go out, you like to camp and kind of make it rough, right? Oh, that's the good stuff. But could you imagine being out in the desert, this sweltering heat for 40 days, no food, no water, nothing. Being tempted in the desert alone. No books, no iPads, no Facebook, no nothing. No phone a friend, no lifeline, nothing. Would you survive? Would you be able to endure what Jesus was put through? You know, when Satan came and, and tested Jesus, it wasn't, now I know a lot of people have text, test anxiety. You see that quiz that your teacher puts in front of you of a mere just 100 questions. I'm sure there's no fear. I'm sure you stayed up the whole night before and, and studied your heart out, ready to go. But Satan asked Jesus three questions. He tempted Jesus, not with a hundred things, but three. Three simple tests. And Jesus endured it. Jesus' responses were awesome. He knew because he trusted in God his Father. He knew what the law was. He knew what was expected of him. Jesus was prepared because he studied. Jesus was prepared because he believed. And because of all those things that prepared him, he was able to endure the storm. The valley in his life, it was nothing. It was a piece of cake for him. And it can be for you. Why do you think we get in our Bibles each week? Why do you think we spend so much time preparing our hearts, meditating on God's word, singing praises, and understanding and fellowshipping with one another, praying for each other, caring for one another? Because God knew this would be the foundation the absolute foundation that you would need in your life to get through the valley of death. You know, as Jesus experienced his moment, for many of us, we would think that the valley, his death, was a valley. But quite frankly, it was a mountain. Jesus stood upon that mountain. He stood upon that cross. And as he bore our sins, he knew, he knew that his test was worth it. He knew that he would be successful for us. He climbed that mountain for you. There's a story by Dwight L. Moody, and I want to read this to you. It was told about a Christian woman who was always bright and cheerful and optimistic, even though she was confined to her bed with an illness. She lived in an attic apartment on the fifth floor of an old run-down building. A friend decided to visit her one day and brought along another woman, a person of great wealth within the community. Since there was no elevator, the two ladies began the long climb up the steps. When they reached the second floor, the well-to-do woman commented, what a dirty, filthy place this is. Her friend replied, it's better, higher up. When they arrived at the third floor landing, the lady remarked again, ugh, 
Things look a lot worse around here. Again, the lady replies, it's better higher up. Finally, they reached the attic level where they found the bedridden saint of God. A smile on her face radiating the joy that filled her heart. And that was with Jesus. Although the room was clean and flowers were on the windowsill, the wealthy visitor could not contain herself about the stark surroundings and blurted out, it must be very difficult for you to live like this around here. Without a moment's hesitation, the shut-in responded, it will be much better higher up. Where'd this lady get her strength? Where'd she get this perspective that it would be better higher up? It's because she had Jesus. It's because she had seen the glory of Christ on top of that mountain. I want us to go over to Proverbs to finish up today. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Hear these words. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart, for they will give you a long and satisfying life. Never let loyalty and kindness get away from you. Wear them like a necklace. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will gain a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your paths. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn back on evil. Then you will gain renewed health and vitality. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything your land produces. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with the finest wine.